In calculus, the definition of limit is a formalization of the notion of limit. It was first given by Bernard Bowles Arno in 1817. Augustine, Louis Cauchy never gave an. Some of Corky's proofs contain indications of the Epsilon Delta method. Whether or not his foundational approach can be considered a harbinger of Weir's traces is a subject of scholarly dispute. Grabener feels that it is, while Schubring disagrees. Nakana concludes that Corti and Weierstrass gave the same name to different notions of limit. Informal statement. Let f be a function. To say that means that f can be made as close as desired to l by making the independent variable x close enough but not equal to the value c. How close is close enough to c depends on how close one wants to make f to l. It also of course depends on which function f is and on which number c is. Therefore let the positive number epsilon be how close one wishes to make f to l. Strictly one wants the distance to be less than epsilon. Further, if the positive number delta is how close one will make x to c, and if the distance from x to c is less than delta, then the distance from f to l will be less than epsilon. Therefore delta depends on epsilon. The limit statement means that no matter how small epsilon is made, delta can be made small enough. The letters epsilon and delta can be understood as error and distance, and in fact Corti used epsilon as an abbreviation for error in some of his work. This definition also works for functions with more than one argument. For such functions, Delta can be understood as the radius of a circle or a sphere or some higher dimensional analogy centered at the point where the existence of a limit is being proven in the domain of the function and for which every point inside maps to a function value less than epsilon away from the value of the function at the limit point. Precise statement. The definition of the limit of a function is as follows. Let be a function defined on a subset, let be a limit point of, and let be a real number. Then the function has a limit that is defined to mean for all, there exists as such that for all in that satisfy, the inequality holds. Symbolically, worked example, let us prove the statement that this is easily shown through graphical understandings of the limit, and as such serves as a strong basis for introduction to proof. According to the formal definition above, a limit statement is correct if and only if confining to units of will inevitably confine to units of. In this specific case, this means that the statement is true if and only if confining to units of 5 will inevitably confine to units of 12. The overall key to showing this implication is to demonstrate how and must be related to each other such that the implication holds. Mathematically, we want to show that simplifying, factoring, and dividing 3 on the right-hand side of the implication yields which immediately gives the required result if we choose thus the proof is completed. The key to the proof lies in the ability of one to choose boundaries in, and then conclude corresponding boundaries in, which in this case were related by a factor of 3, which is entirely due to the slope of 3 in the line continuity. A function f is said to be continuous at c if it is both defined at c and its value at c equals the limit of f as x approaches c. If the condition 0 less than x minus c is left out of the definition of limit, then requiring f to have a limit at c would be the same as requiring f to be continuous at c. f is said to be continuous on an interval i if it is continuous at every point c of i. Comparison with infinitesimal definition. Keisler proved that a hyperreal definition of limit reduces the quantifier complexity by two quantifiers namely, converges to a limit L as tends to A if and only if for every infinitesimal E, the value is infinitely close to L, C microcontinuity for a related definition of continuity, essentially due to Cauchy. Infinitesimal calculus textbooks based on Robinson's approach provide definitions of continuity, derivative, and integral at standard points in terms of infinitesimals. Once notions such as continuity have been thoroughly explained via the approach using microcontinuity, 
The Epsilon Delta approach is presented as well. Carol H. R. B. A. C. E. K. argues that the definitions of continuity, derivative, and integration in Robinson-style non-standard analysis must be grounded in the Epsilon Delta method in order to cover also non-standard values of the input. Blash Chick Hale argue that microcontinuity is useful in developing a transparent definition of uniform continuity, and characterize the criticism by HRBACEK as of dubious lament. HRBACEK proposes an alternative non-standard analysis, which is unlike Robinson's having many levels of infinitesimals so that limits at one level can be defined in terms of infinitesimals at the next level. Bibliography Grabener, Judith V. The Origins of Corky's Rigorous Calculus Mitt Press, Cambridge, Mass, London, 1981. Schubring, Gert. Conflicts between generalization, rigor, and intuition. Number concepts underlying the development of analysis in 17th-19th century France and Germany. Springer, ISBN 0-387-22836-5.